it's obvious that we don't intervene in many kind of emergency situation because there's too great a risk, a risk to our life or limb. But now what happens when you're in a situation where if you don't act, there could be a risk to your life. Imagine you're in a, situ you're in a room and a smoke alarm goes off, smoke is pouring out from under the door. Uh, and if you don't leave that room quickly, the, a, fly, a fire could, could erupt and, and you could be suffocated or burned to death. It's obvious what you do. But now again, what happens if you're in that same room and there are 10 other people and all of them do nothing? Do you take action when other people define the situation as do nothing rather than do something? When your life is at stake by following the herd. Behaving differently from your group can make you an outcast. But what would you do if you knew your group was entirely wrong? Would you, for example, sit in a burning room just because everyone else does? This hotel conference suite has been prepared for a focus group discussion on internet shopping. But all is not as it seems. We've been busy. The place is rigged with four hidden cameras and six concealed microphones. And psychology professor Dominic Abrams is watching from our control room, which we built in an adjoining suite. Now it's just a question of sitting and waiting. Right, so this is a questionnaire all about kind of shopping habits and everything okay. here. So I'll just move that off your chair. So you can our first there. participant is Mary Mizuno, a London student who thinks she's arrived early. What she doesn't know is that behind this door, there's about to be a serious fire in the hotel kitchen. Or at least the illusion of one, created by a smoke machine and some sound effects. What will she do? Oh, she's now noticed the smoke and is concerned. At this point, she decides to investigate find out what's going on. She's immediately taken responsibility for figuring out what to do. Mary does the sensible thing and evacuates quickly. She even leaves her bag and coat. As I've never been in a fire situation before, I tried to remember the kind of things that you're supposed to do, so I left my stuff and, and just went out. But Mary was on her own. This time, we've planted seven actors who are all in on the experiment. We've said to them, when you see the smoke, do nothing. Our second participant is Lauren Heffernan, also a student. What will she do? In this situation, she'll be following a script. The script is partly written in her mind. It's a script which is borrowed from things like sitting exams. Most situations like this have some element of expected or scripted behavior. But what will happen to her script when we make a slightly unusual situation very unusual? Nothing to start with, so we get her attention. Now, how long before she dashes out of the room? <coughs> She's checking increasingly to see what the other people are thinking. But who can she appeal to? The answer is nobody. She turns to the norm of the group, ignore the smoke. In a real fire, the people in this group would be in very serious danger by now. I was looking for some sort of reaction from someone else, even just the slightest little thing, that they'd recognize that there was something, you know, going on here. For me to kind of react on that and then do something about it, I kind of needed prodding. She's waiting for someone else to react. Why isn't anyone else reacting? She feels uncomfortable. She doesn't want to embarrass herself by taking the lead, taking action. But something is definitely wrong. Lauren stayed in the room for 20 minutes after spotting the smoke, concerned but immobile. The fire brigade say that if this fire had been real, even if flames hadn't burnt through the door, she would have died of asphyxiation in this time. In the end, we had to ask her to leave. Pop out here. Thanks. I was surprised that I didn't do anything at all. 
I was just literally waiting. I just thought that someone else is surely going to say something soon. And because no one else did, I just didn't react at all. We tried the experiment ten times, and the same thing happened over and over again. If the person was on their own, they left quickly. If they were in a group of three or more, they stayed, rooted to the spot. The average length of time they stayed, 13 minutes. In real fires, people die because of behavior like this. In 1979, a blaze at Woolworths in Manchester killed 10 people. The fire occurred during the day when the, the store was occupied by hundreds of people. Most of those people managed to get out quite safely. The people that died in the fire were actually using the restaurant at the time. But why so many fatalities in the restaurant? Investigators eventually realized that people simply hadn't evacuated. They'd waited to pay their bills. That was their routine. We go into a restaurant. We, we sit down, the waiter comes over, we choose a meal, we eat the meal, we pay for the meal, and then we leave the building. That's our script, if you like, for eating a meal. Worse still, everyone was following the same script, and no one wanted to be the only one to stray. One of the main reasons why people died in the Wolves Fire is because they didn't want to be the first to react. They didn't want to stand out for the crowd and went along with the, the crowd behavior. Only one person in our experiment didn't go along with the crowd behavior, artist James McKechnie. What's that coming up from under the table? <laughs> is it fire? Uh, I don't know. You should just wait till she comes back. Yeah. yeah. She said oh, just to wait here, yeah. didn't she? What? What is that? Yeah. What is that? Don't know. She said just to wait here, didn't she? What? That? She's coming right down now. James isn't going to sit in a dangerous room just because everyone else does. Yeah. Or is he? The power of the group proves irresistible. The reassurances of the rest of the group that somebody else is responsible seem to be sufficient to pull him back into place. Instead of leaving the room and calling for help, he sits back down again and waits. Yeah. Now everybody's looking at the smoke, but in some ways that gives the group even more influence. After all, if everybody can see the smoke and no one's panicking, well, it would be crazy for him to do it too. James stays in the room for another 10 minutes before finally leaving. In a real fire, he wouldn't have been able to leave. He'd have been unconscious and close to suffocation.